And honestly, earlier on we were talking about God Dragons. We were talking about Agapain and uh, LP, and those were very popular back in the day in the Thunder Dragon deck. Ooh. But here we have it in 2023. Even without those, we are playing Thunder Dragons. Now adding the Bestials. And I mean, Bestials plus Thunder Dragons, just by immediately thinking about it, I'm like, there's a connection because you want to banish the Thunder Dragon cards from your graveyard. That just works like a charm. And uh, did we just see yeah. normal summon Armageddon Knight? Oh, what year is it? Armageddon Knight from the Phantom Mother Dark. Of all combo starters. <laughs> Indeed. And we are going to send the Thunder Dragon Raw to the graveyard. I've been wondering, am I, in, am I in 2019? Is this? Oh, and there comes the Chaos Base discard, Drew's Boom. That must feel good. <laughs> Fabian is not in for a good time right here. This is the dream scenario. And we're definitely in for a good time right here. This Absolutely. is, I, I'm just amazed. I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't know what the sort of end field is. I'm loving all of the, like, obviously no Thunder Dragon Colossus anymore, which is probably why we've not been seeing so many of these Thunder Monsters, but still. They're so easy to banish now. You don't just need to use Wyvern Buster and Collapse Up, and you've got all of the Bestials. Totally, absolutely. And I mean, of course, no Colossus, as you just mentioned, because that card is now forbidden. But there's also no Titanus extra deck. There's not even a single Fusion Monster in this extra deck, to be exact. So I'm guessing all the Thunder Dragon cards are just there as Link fodder, I would assume. Yeah, I think so too. And usually we see that in this decklist, I think there's only one Armageddon Knight. This kind of Dragonlink version with the Thunder Spice, with the Static, as we call it. It's running Triple Battery Man Solar, so this is the card you really prefer here. Totally. So, of course, we are going to grab the one Black Dragon, Kalop Serpent from our deck, special summoning it out right away. Now there's, of course, the Chaos Space that is going to put back the White Dragon and immediately going to draw us a card. Woo. Next draw already. So many draws this weekend. Oh, okay. and look oh. at that. Yes, that is a card you usually don't see in Dragon Link, but in this Thunder Dragon deck, it's very popular. This is going to be Saruya coming I'm down here. This is, this is straight out of 2019, isn't it? And then there's yep. going to be the Guard Dragon underneath the Saruja. This I'm, is amazing. I'm afraid he's going to summon LP next. <laughs> Let's hope not. LP yeah. and Agapain, why not? But I mean, like, Saruya kind of making a comeback this weekend, yeah. right? We saw Dark World really, really playing with it, and now there is this Bistil Thunder Dragon deck here. We saw Bryce, I think, already twice on stream, one pre-recorded and one live match as well. Saruya is just one of these amazing cards in combo decks. It does so much. It lets you just turn, like, your spare monsters on the field into a bunch of draws, and then lets you summon another monster from your hand. Beautifully yeah. made. For the Look at deck. the hand of Esteban. Of course, it's <laughs> yeah. only for a second that he has so many cards in hand because he has to put back three. But overall, that's just such an amazing play right there. And you can decide which ones to keep, which is so good. Yeah. I think I already see a branded beast in his hand, which is a beautiful and strong interruption. It's nice. You know, you can dream you have that many cards in your hand. But at the end of the day, a lot of them are just coming for free, right? You've got that search off the Thunder Dragon Dark already. You've got the. Uh, dragon that you can't summon this turn. I think this, this should be the white dragon in your hand. So a lot a lot of stuff you really don't mind putting back. And the um, the boot sector launch. I probably is. said that wrong. Is it boot sector launch? Boot sector that, launch. It is, is totally. that, that is just his name. It okay, totally. excellent. Just to just to prove it. You're proving it. Oh, oh interesting. Look at that. We are discarding the Druid's from for the effect of Cypher, meaning we're going to grab a level 6, just grabbing us another bestial, and it's going to be Saronir. But of course, there is an explanation for that. Saronir Basically, the only bestial with another graveyard effect, besides Druze, one but uh, the only bestial that has a useful graveyard effect here because it can send another bestial card from the deck to the graveyard. Surely, the only explanation is Magnumut is already in hand, right? Or a branded <laughs> spell trap, by the way. Oh, true. I mean, oh, or a God form of <laughs> there yes. they are. Oh gosh, again. Atom. Not is for the first Atom? time. It has to be again the King of Atom. Yes, let's. Go! Great Dragon exceeds monsters in this strategy, and Saranir, of course, will always trigger when you say Oh, it this is why. So we've got the Magnum. There's the Magnum mode, yep, and also the Saranir. This is crazy, quite frankly. I'm already super impressed by it. I'm sold. You're sold? I want to play this deck. Same, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely same. So there's the Lubellion that was just sent to the graveyard. And we are going to activate the Regain. Of course we can now activate the Regain because the Branded Beast already sits pretty in our hands. So 
we are going to end on both here, I'm pretty sure. But Basti, please play a little bit of fortune, uh, of a fortune teller here. What are the cards that he could summon to end the turn or to to his end field? I think so we so. said that the Thunder Dragon cards basically are just Link fodder, and I'm assuming that IP Mascarena would be one of the cards uh, that would be pretty uh, yeah. reasonable on his end field. And good there one. it is. Okay, I was pretty good at fortune telling there. Not gonna lie. And uh, besides that. Of course, it's a little different. Like, you're not going for the Borderlands Dragon because this is a mixture of a Dragon Link deck, so you don't really have enough dragons to really even get to it. Um, but besides that, Chaos Angel is a card that I can see because it's a Synchro 10 that is pretty generic. Is, and that, is that Baron in the extra deck? There is not even Baron, no. I'm amazed to see it. This is like the first deck that can make yeah. synchros that doesn't... Is there no rockets in the deck? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, there's no rockets. Okay, just the boot sector launch? Wait, is there a boot sector launch? He, he made the, the striker dragon. I thought he added boot sector launch. I no, mean, there's there the no. bestial strategies. Ah, always okay. play striker dragon, but not all the time. Ah, there, okay, the okay. launch. And yeah, there, there's no boot I think I just launch. saw the... <laughs> didn't, I, I kind of skipped a step in my head once I saw the striker dragon. I just didn't... There was but no boot sector. There at any is point. the end phase. So, to be fair, a lot of times, Bestial Control was something that was very popular over the last couple of weeks, and that only went for Seal's Pass a lot of the time. And this is Seal's Pass plus IP, which I <laughs> do definitely like. And now, Fabian is playing kind of a mind game, maybe, because he's revealing Kashira Fenrir, but he's not revealing yet what his actual strategy is. Actually, Fenrir is crazy versus this field because if you're activating the seal you can bounce back the fender oh. but then it goes Ooh. that is book of the clip wow. right away which would be really 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 amazing versus regular kashtira because That's they true. would have a monster in the main monster zone but what astamon doesn't know this is not regular kashtira this is just gold pride punk with a couple of fenrir's being thrown into it fenrir is such a versatile card you can pretty much throw it into any strategy you want almost the hand of fabian looks massive as well. We can see triple tactic talents, which most certainly is going to be activated at some point because there is seal and IP. There is, is now I think emergency teleport as you well. You probably already activated the Magnemode, right? That was just special No, that summons. was uh, Brennan Regained, I think. Yeah, but I mean, you still, still use the effect. Oh, yeah, yeah. right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, talents. Do we activate talents to take here? Because that kind of forces out a bunch of stuff by our opponent, doesn't it? I mean, if, if you activate the IP, then you just take one over against someone. Take. I feel like if it's take, you just you just let it through. Probably because chaining the IP doesn't do anything. You could theoretically chain the seals. To be honest, you could chain the no. seal and bounce your own monster. It doesn't feel good though. We're now going to take control of seals, and I mean that is decent actually because that means that both effects are going to be shut down. And there's the emergency teleport. So Astabon sees the bad news. This is not regular Kashira, but no, there is going to be a psychic monster joining the field here. Does Esteban have any sort of interaction oh, coming from his hand? He chained the Baldrick, and that is actually going to be an interruption because Baldrick is like the only real bestial that has an on-field effect. So when Fabian decides to special summon out a monster from his extra deck, that would give Bistil Bordrake the trigger to banish one monster on the side of Fabian. And also, if he summons a ritual monster, you can do it as well. True. That's actually reason. not coming from Exodus. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and it's the unpopular choice of bringing out Vagon. Usually, it's always going to be Zeamin, but we are going for Vagon first. I mean, we might have a Zeamin on the, in the hand already. Must be. And look at this. Like, I, we already, I mean, I'd already forgotten about this, but he just banished a Thunder Dragon Dark. So he's going to get to yep. add a Thunder Dragon, then he's going to get to return it and draw a card. This is like insane. Yeah, the synergy there is just crazy. He didn't, he didn't even try to look at the graveyard of Fabian. Maybe because he just knew that there wasn't a monster, but he just rather wanted to get rid of the Dark in the graveyard, trigger it, draw a card. And now we're reading the Wagon. Yeah, Wagon can search any Punk spell card. And there is only one in his deck, and that's the Field Spell. It's Punk Jam Extreme Session, which is Quite frankly, one of the most powerful spe field spell cards yes. that I know, to be honest. Apart from maybe the Abyss Act of field spell, which oh. we have <laughs> talked about. <laughs> That's yeah, a very a specific one, but yeah, yeah, we actually talked about that early on today because there was an Abyss Actor player doing pretty well in the main event until some point, and then he got some unfortunate <gasps> oh. losses. But that's IP Masquerena using monsters on the opponent's side of the field, and that can only mean that we're going to summon out the good old Underworld Goddess. But that is. 
a really big commitment here. You know, it's quite an investment, right? Yeah. Because now there is Norman summons the army, and that's actually pretty crazy. Because we do not really have an interruption anymore, but there is the Druid's Worm right yeah. away. And there is also a Brand Beast set, I assume, oh, that we yeah. have seen in the hand. So I think that was a trap card. It really looked like Branded Beast. That would get rid of two more monsters here. And then Fabian would really have to see where he can go from the here. Maybe he has a, a Foxy Tune in hand as well. I'm interested what you can send. Can, I, can you send the Fenrir with Druid's Worm? Because it has to target a special summon monster. I assume you can still send the Fenrir if you want to. I think the set monsters still remember that they are a special summon. Right? Yeah, I think so. Until you flip summon it again and then it's flipped up. <laughs> can be a bit confusing dealing with rulings surrounding monsters that have been set face down. But I think I think you're right. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. Fortunately, we have judges on hand. Yeah, and they have very good ones. Oh, and that is going to be wow. a scoop by Fabian. I think Esteban went pretty quick on his interruptions. He was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. Right away, also going to do that. And that did win him the game. Esteban Ray and his Thunder Dragon deck, I don't even know what to say to that, is actually leading here in our last round feature match of the day. And this is maybe sometimes a problem of those combo decks like Gold Pride Punk that play a lot of engine that is, it is plussing a lot, but it does not really have aggressive plays you know if you're playing a bestial dragon combo deck there are a thousand ways to use generic monsters like the nightmares you know unicorn phoenix cerberus to gain more advantage yeah. to plus off of everything with the gold pride and the punk strategy you're kind of easily locking yourself into something and then you're maybe missing some tools to break a field like this i mean but funnily enough i was going to say we've not actually seen we know there's gold pride in the deck true i don't think esteban knows there's gold pride. he does not that I, I don't know what would change about <laughs> side deck Not really. or it's anything kind of like the same. that. But like, he's, I mean, maybe he knows. Maybe he knows that the punk is most commonly used with gold pride. I don't know. What would you think? Yeah, I mean, in the, at some point, I was a big fan of the pure punk deck. That was a thing. But that was only a thing when uh, Kriston Hakifi Brax was around. And also, there was the Chaos Ruler. But oh, nowadays... You, you played it far longer than that. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. I played Tailament versus you with it. <laughs> but what I want to say is that nowadays, you kind of have to put something on top. Pure Punk is not really doing enough. So you need to put something else on top of it, which is the Gold Pride stuff here in that case. And it is working really well. But picking up on what Leo was saying, yeah, the engine sometimes is not enough to also work as aggressive interruption to your opponent. But Dragon Link, in this case, Thunder Dragon, Thunder Dragon, Dragon Link, has that in-engine interruption with yeah. all the bestials, right? We said it earlier, but it's just so strong that your engine is usually used in other decks as an interruption, which is crazy to me. And a fantastic interruption, yeah. to be fair. Also, they are big, powerful dragons, so they have so much attack. Yeah. And that is also, most of the time, pretty important because every bestial can actually just run over a Fenrir. But we have seen that the players are ready for this game number two, so let's go right to the table. Alright, Fabian is probably going to start. We know that Gold Pride Punk really wants to set up a combo and I can't wait for it to happen because I don't think that they're interrupted by bestials that much. There are a couple of points where you could bestial, but all around it's not really that well versus the deck. There are other matchups where you are uh, using your bestials way better than in this one. I'm looking forward to seeing Fabian start here because... Ooh, it's Foxy Tune right away. Esteban sees the news and we are discarding with psychic tracker which is usually an extender you want to search out with your uh, good old punk jam dragon drive so having that in your opening hand is not really optimal and this is a kind of a neat one because this enables you to go for an easy barkion it oh. is indeed but we have the hard drawn extreme session that is huge because now right away with the first punk effect we're using and we're paying life points for being with the army we will be able to also draw cards from our deck. Yeah, and our testing where I was playing tier events and you were playing punk were also extreme testing sessions because you just summoned Psychic and Punisher and then I lost. <laughs> Indeed, and of course he is still playing that Psychic and Punisher. Still to this day a very powerful card that can just quickly seal duels by just gaining infinite attack points. It, in this strategy specifically, it will always yeah. gain so many attack points because 
you are paying life points for your own effects. Yeah, it's a very nice synergy between the decks that Gold Pride need you to lose life points, so you just play this engine where they make you pay life points, which is normally a downside, but in this case, it's kind of an upside. Absolutely, enough. and we are searching out the Sharakuzai. You might be wondering, oh wait, we did not even normal. I, I was saying we, we uh, can't normal this anymore, but we didn't normal yet because that was special summoned out by the Foxy Tune. But we would also have a way to special summon with the Extreme Session later on as well. I was I was thinking if Fabian just summoned his entire deck in attack position there. <laughs> no, this was just offered to cut before. So we are going. Oh, that's the oh. emergency teleport. This is just everything he wants. We do go after the Foxy Tune Ooh. with our Magnamut here. That seems a bit odd because you could kind of do that at any time. Was was there any reason to do that now? I think he wanted to prevent him using the extreme session here because uh -huh. you need to banish a punk card from the graveyard. But maybe Esteban forgot that he actually did not normal no. summon yet because that is just what happened. We are paying 600 life points now for the Shakuzai to fusion summon here into the Okioi punk rising card. Also, you're playing into talents heavily here, and as well if you are trying to go for a dear no play which might as well happen here oh we picked up a solemn judgment with the extreme session this is absolutely crazy so okuyoya is going to summon out two monsters from the deck now that equal level eight and i think that one of them is going to be dear and dear sometimes just wants to summon back a foxy tune and then you can magna mood that's true i think it was oh we oh, are right. we're special summoning out two oh, level three to get the that next gem interesting. Session. but we only do play one extreme session, so that's not okay. going to work out. <laughs> also, I think it was kind of interesting by Fabian to use the effect of extreme session to draw for a second time already before bringing out the damn spider, because yeah. he himself there risked, uh, took the risk to just draw into the trap card he just searched out there, and it would have been pretty unfortunate because he then would have had not uh, a way to search a trap with it. Yeah, but he found a trap card and it is Solemn Judgment, so it actually benefited him to not <laughs> search for the card first and shuffle the deck, because True. then he could have drawn a card that doesn't really help him at all. But now I'm curious to see where he's going with those two level 3 tuners on the field. Might be to make the rank 3 gold pride. Totally, I think oh, we are going yeah. to see gold pride Sherrod carry here. A nice little bridge between the two engines. So, but first of all, we are oh, now jam session, going yes. to use the effect he of has the jam the session. Note in hand. Uh -huh. Indeed, there we go. That gives us the chance to synchro into a level 8, and I would assume that that is going to be the Punk Jam Dragon Drive that I was talking about earlier. There it is. And yeah, that's my jam. The cool thing about this is you can just play a one of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit in your deck to search it out there. And actually, Ghost Ogre playing it for... Is he playing it? Yes. Yes, he is. It is actually sometimes really, really good in this format because you are going to face a lot of gigantic sprites. Yeah. And I'm just thinking about it, how decent is it versus the Bestial Thunder Dragon deck? Oh, it's a good hit on LP. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's actually true. That's what you did back in the day against the Guard Dragon cards, so... I guess you did, yeah. So, that... Oh, that is a rank 8 now! We oh. are special summoning back the card! And that is going to be... Wow, we are going for number 90 Galaxy Ice Photon Lord. That's a card we haven't seen in a while. And that is indeed just a negate which you can get out of those two level 8 monsters there. A and monster during your negate? opponent's I turn, uh, you can... Da -da -da. No, when an opponent's monster activates this effect, you can just detach raw material to negate that effect and also destroy the monster. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Just a generic monster negate. And you can add galaxy cards from your deck. I don't know whether we're going to see that, but yes, in theory, that's possible. Oh, and he has not even used the emergency teleport. He was holding that until now. And he can now special summon out the Armin again. And that again leads to two level three monsters on the field. And as we were already guessing before, this will be Gold Pride Chariot carry. Yep, and that one is a fantastic card from the newest set, Cyberstorm Axis. It is indeed. And he will be able to now also get his Gold Pride engine going. To be fair, now Esteban finally knows that there's yeah. also Gold Pride in there. Because so far in both games there was only Punk, but now there's also Gold Pride. And I think this one adds a Gold Pride spell card from the deck to the hand. The Gold Pride extract ones are quite unique in the way that they just send themselves back to the extra deck. Actually, that's not unique. I was gonna Neos say, was doing yeah, that Yeah, we before. saw Neos earlier today. These are a bit like Neospatians, aren't they? They 
they are indeed. Although so. unfortunately there's no Neo space for them. But I think the Gold Pride, Better Luck Next Time, is very similar to it. So we do search out the Better Luck Next Time. And in the process of that, we also put the Roller Bowler, R Roller Baller, the one-off to the graveyard. Yeah, you get these, a bon all of the Gold Pride monsters have a little bonus effect. If your life points are lower than your opponent's, so Fabian being at 5,600 from the life points he's paid from his punk cards, is going to get the bonus effect of carry. In addition to adding a spell, you also get to send a monster from your deck to the grave. And what's the benefit of having Roller Baller in your graveyard there? That's a good question. <laughs> Maybe so you can Leon, bring it back Leon with can, Leon in the future. Uh, yeah, special summon a Absolutely. Gold Pride monster. Yeah. It just helps to get your Gold Pride engine rolling. And That's there we oh, are activating better one. luck next time. Searching ourselves, Gold Pride Captain Carry. And I want to say Captain Carry probably the strongest of the main deck monsters for the deck. Let's you add a trap, I think. And the trap is like incredibly powerful. We already have yeah. the punk trap in our hands, but the Gold Pride trap, start your engines, is just insane. And there he adds it to his hands. This leads to a lot of interruptions. Start your engines can summon back a Leon from the graveyard that we get oh, from the deck that we get the Leon from the hand already. They are going to over go to the graveyard <laughs> and we are going to see. Oh, right. that is absolutely Gold Pride Star Leon. And Gold Pride Star Leon will target the Magnamut here. I think it's just going to target it and then it's going to gain some attack, which isn't really relevant because it's going to go back to and the extra deck in the end phase. Lower, it's going to pop but it. But then it pops it, yeah. And you are always going to be lower life points than your opponent. That is really, really neat. I mean, Esteban here knows that his opponent has the Jaruri Punk Dangerous Gabu. He knows about the start of your engines. What he doesn't know is the Solemn Judgment, but that's yep. a lot of interruptions. On top of that, he does know about the Ghost Ogre as well, though. So that's just so many interruptions that Fabian has set up here. I love it. Are we going to get to draw two cards from the start of your engines? Is that once per turn the... I think it's once per turn. Okay. Or is this... Uh, Sorry, I, I made... Oh, no, better, better luck next time. the wrong card. Yeah, better luck next time. So now both... Yeah. Gold Pride monsters on the field are going to trigger in the end phase, as you were just saying earlier. They sort of tag out for their respective Gold Pride monsters. So all of the Gold Pride monsters have a sort of special um, extra deck monster that they're attached to, so... The Chariot should summon back Captain Carry, and the Synchro should summon back Leon. Totally. I think, honestly, Gold Pride Punk might be one of those decks that could perform a similar story than Vika Son of Along did last year for the European Championship, <laughs> because people still don't really know about the Gold Pride stuff, so this could catch a lot of people by surprise. And this might be the story of the weekend, just Fabian Ruland with his uh, Gold Pride Punk deck catching people by surprise. Yeah, it's interesting because Gold Pride is a TCG exclusive archetype, if I'm not mistaken. So oftentimes when new cards are coming out, people look at how they've performed in the OCG where they get released a little bit sooner. But we haven't seen this, so it's up to us TCG players to try and figure out how best to use the new cards. Totally. So we're starting things off with the Druid's Wall. I think we but haven't still started. the end phase, yeah. Yeah, I think we're in the end phase. Oh, we're still in the end phase, but fair enough. opens up a possible negation, right? That is yeah. absolutely what we're going to do. Negate and destroy. I think it does I think. destroy. I, I, we checked on it earlier, but wait, let's double check because he's now searching for something with the Magna Mood. Can you repeat the name for me? When as well? an opponent's monster activates the fact, you can detach material from this card, negate that monster's effect. It does not. Oh, wait. And ah, if, if a material is a Galaxy oh, Ice card. Oh, it only destroys side. if you ah. detach the Galaxy card. Fair enough. So it was actually worth activating the Druid's Room there. Did anyone catch what he added with the Magnet? Probably a Bastille. It most likely was that Lubelion, right? That's yeah. a pretty good add. Oh, and by the way, there is a valuable target for Bastilles in the graveyard of Fabian, which would be the Jam Dragon, right? Um, that is also an Earth monster, as so many of the Earth. Punk monsters. Oh, it looked very much like a light there. Totally, yeah. So, adding another copy of Magna Mood. I like that interaction of search or of activating Magna Mood and then searching for Lubelli and just immediately can uh, immediately grabbing the Magna Mood again. So it's just an endless cycle of Magna Mood searches. Yeah, it's great if you're 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 the dragon player. Yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. Like because technically you can't search Magna Mood with Magna Mood, but by playing the Lubelion you then can. Bit of a loophole, right? <laughs> pretty pretty nice. So Chaos Space is going to grab out 
V Dark Dragon. Kind of looks like he drew the Lubellion for turn as well because he just discarded one. I think he wouldn't have searched one if he. <laughs> had I would agree. Yeah. Already. And maybe because he's discarding a Lubellion, I mean he's not got any thunders in hand, so a bit sad. Yeah. I was really enjoying seeing the the, the thunder synergy with the Bastilles. It's making me a bit nostalgic. Definitely. I, I, I played that deck for the uh, 2019 European Championships. I think Fabian was pretty too. quick in allowing Chaos Space there because uh, he does have the Solemn Judgment set there. And I think Chaos Space is a card you consider to use Solemn Judgment on because that is just an easy two for one there. Solemn Judgment, even though it kind of looks like when you read it, it can negate everything. In fact, nowadays, there are, because, it, because monster effects are so prevalent, it doesn't actually negate monster effects. So you can sometimes sneak monsters through like the Bestials. And then, yeah, before you, well, you wouldn't get a chance to solve Judgment Hunt. Ooh, and right away we are going to use one of the traps that our opponent knows about. We are going to use the Gold Pride Start Your Engines on the Druid Swarm. I like how the card specifically says start on the artwork as well. I think the Gold Pride sort of theme is that you're on a, on a, on a racetrack. Right, and this is, uh, I might be getting this completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure because there are chariots and... Uh, it does make things. sense, for sure. Yeah, so so we're, this is the start of the race. By rolling a dice, they decide which random card is going to find its way onto the field, and that it's going to be another Leon there. I mean, we already had Leon, so that's not really the card you wanted there. I think we have all of the ones that we're playing in the main deck, right? Yeah. Is, is there another one except for... Uh, is, is there a different one than... I think there are just Carry, these Roller three. Border, in the, there are just these three that exist at the moment. No, oh, there's the Nitro Head as well. Oh. But Nitro Head is like a specific one that you don't really need here. I want to say. So there's all the base deals. There is Magna Mood again. I mean, we just searched over the Rebellion, so it's just kind of obvious. Uh, Drew's Worm getting a lot of value there. Yeah. Both being destroyed and then using its effect in the graveyard. Such a great tool for picking up our boards when you're going second. Banishing the. Lubellion bringing itself to the field, of course, using its effect. And Fabian considering to respond to that, but that is fine. And just an attack? Looks like it, yeah. And it's dangerous to leave Fabian on so many monsters, right? Because yeah. they could just be a quick and easy Psychic End Punisher to seal this game here very, very quickly. I think I think the Rollerballer can fuse during your opponent's turn, but it's so I think maybe he needed to force it out or attack over it before he could continue with whatever plan he had for main phase two. Yeah, that's very likely. But why did he not go for the pinballer here? Because I think he could have just... Wick... Or did he just activate the Magnum in the battle phase? Oh, that's also possible, actually. That's a good point. That's I mean, I think sometimes if your opponent says battle phase, sometimes it's just worth it just to let them if they've only got the yeah. one monster. I mean, you are safe now because... With punk decks, it's always dangerous because you are putting <laughs> yourself on a very low amount of life points. So uh, it is always dangerous for your opponent to just quickly get a bunch of damage in, or not even a bunch, but just the appropriate amount. And therefore, oh. Fabian will be happy to see another turn. And Leon is activated onto the normal summon of Starleach Cypher, I suppose. And we are going to see Starleon in the extra monster zone, which is eventually going to pop the Cypher. That is indeed what is happening here. Esteban checking his cards in hand. Does he have any way to prevent this? He does not. Starleach Cypher it going to the graveyard. He's almost used like every Bastille. <laughs> so There's he, not much he, left, yeah. Yeah, is he going to have another way to get a monster onto the field? He did just normal summon, so yeah. there wouldn't be that many ways. This almost seems like a desperation oh, play, right? Looks, <laughs> like he's, looks like he's grabbing his deck there, and that would indicate him going to the end phase. Uh, but not just yet, or... Oh! Yeah, he can summon Lubellion still. True. For a second, I thought he's banishing all three monsters in his graveyard, and we're going to see Levy. Is that a Lubellion in, in, in attack mode? Yeah, it's angry. <laughs> it's angry Lubellion. But is it, is it allowed to summon itself in the attack position? It is. It's just everyone okay. normally summons it in defense mode. I'm just True. a bit confused why you'd summon it in attack mode in main phase two. Oh, but there is dangerous Gabu being wow. activated. Oh. And there is the Kurikara! But wow. is, is that so strong against those two monsters here? Because, I mean, fair enough, Leon Star, Star Leon would have summoned uh, Would have summoned back, back a regular Leon, right? and then would have drawn you a card as well with the yeah. Star Your Engine. Uh, not, I keep calling it Star Your Engine. It's better, better luck next, next time. Next time yeah. Exactly. 
and there is still, of course, the Black Dragon Collab Serpent in his hand. You see Fabian there just sort of playing with the Solemn Judgment. I, I think we Solemn this, right? We do indeed. Yeah. Solemn Judgment is going to negate the Summon of the Black Dragon Collab Serpent there. And that means that it has never entered the field, so you cannot get the surge off of it. Yeah, Unlike you know, the Bestials, Collab Serpent is not an effect to Special Summon. It's a sort of it's a condition to Special Summon, which means it doesn't start a chain and can be negated by Solemn Judgment. But let's not forget about the end phase effect of Kurikara yeah. Divincanate. So we could just special summon out something from our Ooh. opponent's graveyard. A wealth of monsters to choose from. Which of the best punk do you think to take to your side of the field? I mean, none of them do really have any quick effects to use on your opponent's turn. So I don't think I would go after a punk, and I would much rather prefer to... Yeah... Yeah, I mean... Oh, wait! Does he have a target to search yeah. for? Because this triggers on Special Summon. Jam Dragon nope. Drive tra it's, triggers on Special Summon. It's a Special Summon by the effect of a punk monster, Oh, right? okay. So usually yeah. it's its own effect. But the good thing about having the Jam Dragon Drive is that you are now able to respond to the punk effects of your opponent, because otherwise the punk Jam Dragon Drive would Special Summon itself out after you responded to a punk effect, which means it would be Special Summoned by a punk card, which is itself, yeah. and then a it would be able to search again. So I think it is it is valuable to take this resource away from your opponent. But play goes back to Fabian. He's only left with a Leon. Let's see what he can do out of it. I mean, there are potentially two extra draws he can get off of the Extreme Session if he gets this engine going again, paying life points. But be aware, he's only on 2,350 life yeah, points Yeah, I was now, looking so at that. His life points are very low with the Solemn, so... He can only be... basically pay for free punk attacks. <laughs> yeah. That would enable him to draw two cards with the Extreme Session, and it would also make up for a pretty, pretty decent Psychic End Punisher, but... Oh, yeah. Let's see whether he gets to that, even. I mean, he still has the Leon on the field. I'm still confused why this Lubelio is in attack mode. He's just and hanging out there. <laughs> what do we have here? Is that a card that helps? It's the normal summon of the Ghost Ogre we were holding in our hand. It, he didn't find a good time to use it because Esteban, quite frankly, didn't give him a good timing to use it. He no. played around the card he knew, and he now has to normal summon it. And what is he even trying to accomplish here? I Might mean, be another copy of Chariot, because they're both level 3 monsters. Well, not another copy, the same copy of Chariot. Yeah, yeah, he's only running one, but it bounced itself back to the extra deck. Oh, there's Baldrake being used. Oh, this nice. looks like yeah. an Exeeds. I was thinking we might go for MX Cyber Invoke and go for a full Zudia combo here, but I doubt that this is going to happen. But we are indeed seeing the Chariot. We're only in 2019. I think that's too <laughs> too far back. <laughs> the thing is, we can now just use the Baldrake. Baldrake is tributing yeah. Globalion, and the Chariot is going to be banished. Do we have a way to extend through that? We oh. do oh, with wow. a special summon of Kashira Fenrir. This has always been a really great play to pick apart fields. I mean, it's facing its nemesis, the Kurikara, basically. <laughs> well, this time it's got free reign just to send that Kurikara into the face down banished zone. The problem is, I don't think he has any way to run over one of the monsters on the side of Esteban there. Yeah, they're both. All of the monsters are too big for Fenrir, so I guess you just crash into the defense mode. Yeah for zero damage, I think, or you can just... Or you can just attack and yeah. trigger a replay. Oh, really? What's going on here? Okay. He definitely had motion to attack the Kurikara. Yeah, that means he's going to crash into it, right? Oh, you do You do get a replay because the monster oh, right. was bad. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely do. I mean, he still left the Kurikara on the field. It just seems strange to ever point the Fenrir at the Kurikara. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're banishing the Kurikara, <laughs> Now Fabian is thinking it? again, do I really want to attack into this? It does not seem like a good idea, especially because he's so low on life points. Uh, yeah, I mean, you take 2100 damage, so... He does do it, uh. though! We are going to crash the Fenrir into the Kurikara, and what's happening next? Is there a way Special to capitalize on that? Another Fenrir. Fenrir. <laughs> There's Death. another Fenrir defense, and he's on 250 life points! That what is, what is not the meaning much. of this? Isn't this just switch to attack and and swing for game. It does look like that. Does he think that he will maybe... Oh, this is the fist bump. Esteban wins this 2 and oh, Fabian did not have the better luck this time. <laughs> better luck so next time. He, he's him. still in the <laughs> tournament, so we can definitely wish him better luck for the next time, but that was crazy. He had two traps that he searched for. He had the Solemn Judgment on top of it. Yeah. He had Ghost Ogre. He had multiple interruptions on the field. It didn't even seem like Esteban had that much. He just had his Bestials replacing itself. 
That was huge by Esteban. I think it's really cool. It just shows, like, as we see with the Cash Tira deck, similar to the Bist deals, they're just big. So that really puts you in an advantage going second. You can just summon them and just threaten yeah. to attack over totally. any interruptions your opponent has. You don't even need to threaten. You can just definitely <laughs> attack, and it's going to create a lot of problems for totally. your opponent. But it's, I think it's a super, super cool deck, definitely. But I want to say, because this was the last deck we saw of the day, let's have a look again at all of the decks that have been played today. So let's have a quick look at the deck breakdown for the tournament, because we haven't really paid that much attention to that just yet. And it's no surprise that we see Kashira yeah. up there with 20%. Tom, are you surprised by that number in particular? One-fifth of the players have decided to play Kashira. Did you expect a higher or a lower number? I think that's about right. One thing I am surprised at, though, is this So this runic category we've got here is a combination of a lot of runic decks. So this will include runic plunder patrol, obviously, <laughs> yes. as we saw the, in the last um, round. Of course, of course that's deck, the yeah. first thing on everybody's mind. The fur hire deck and, of course, the live twin sprite deck, all very popular. So I thought maybe those combined, you know, by their powers combined, would be <laughs> as large as... Uh, I do agree, for yeah. sure. The <laughs> next deck is, is the... Every bestial variant, and, and I don't mean that there are three bestials in the side deck, or rather four, three Magnamuts and one Druis Worm. It's going to be the heavily into bestial invested ones, and I'm really happy to see that dragons are picking up pace again. Yeah, and I mean, there are, there are, there's quite a big variety of dragon decks, because we just saw the uh, Thunder Dragon bestial deck, which we is also in now. this category. There's a Salt Synchron Synchro Synchro Dragon Link deck, yes. so <laughs> that is really, really cool as well. So there's definitely something to be discovered tomorrow with those kind of decks as well. And uh, then there is the usual Sprite, Labyrinth, of course, after the success of Dinka Bui at German Nationals, also very well represented. We see Brandon up there too. And of course, Rika has to be mentioned because that is still the defending deck from last year. Max Patel is still going strong in the tournament as well. So the 4% of Rika players in the tournament are doing very, very well for itself. And then there's the 4% of Fluan de Ries players, all of them being Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have seen so many different Italian players playing Fluan de Ries. Just Diego Ganzelli, who was famous for the deck, is playing something else. So we also have the Pali deck and some other decks. I think we will see some of those soon. But we are now going to go over to Ed after this fantastic day of UBO for some closing words. Thank you very much, Leo. Yes, that is it for our first day here at the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG EU World Championship Qualifier in Utrecht for 2023. It's been a long old day for all of our duelists and all of our team working here, but it has been exceptionally good fun. And thank you to all of you guys at home on our YouTube and Twitch who've tuned in. Now, for those of you who are on YouTube and Twitch, before we end, remember that there is a giveaway which you guys can take part in. The links should be pinned in the chats that you guys have, and throughout the the weekend you have to look at 10 cards that we've going to be showed off throughout the day so right now i'm going to show you one more card and you have to make sure that you note this down somewhere this is ground zeno this is an amazing card from the new wild survivors set and very good for my dinosaur cards so there you guys go make sure you note that down ground zeno that's another one that you guys have to make sure you've noted get them all written down get those all in there and by the end of tomorrow you'll have all 10 and if you guys get all 10 correct you'll be able to be entered into a chance to win one of those display booster boxes of wild survivors itself where you can get all of those wonderful dinosaur cards <laughs> That's why I got it, at least. Anyway, this has been an absolutely amazing day. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us. And thank you to my wonderful coverage team for being so amazing, doing such a great job with every single one of the coverages. And thank you so much for sticking around and watching also the world qualifying points matches that we've got. We've got even more of that coming tomorrow because we've done all the Swiss ones today, which means tomorrow you guys will see exactly who made it into the world's qualifier because it's the top three from that playoff who make it into worlds. And it's the top players in this entire Euros event that you'll see at the end of tomorrow who are going to make their way into the World Championships live in Tokyo later this year. It's going to be very exciting to see what happens in that top eight. That's going to be the moment you guys really want to be around for because it's all going to be a big bubble match to see who's going to Worlds. Be sure to join us tomorrow on Sunday at 9 a.m. local time here in Utrecht where we're going to be kicking straight back off with our 10th round of Swiss before we get to the 11th round 
and then it's into the top cut. Top 64 will go from there. You guys do not want to miss it. I've been Ed Templer. Thank you very much for having me here as your host. It's always a pleasure to be doing this with all of you guys. And make sure you guys get a good night's sleep for a good old day of dueling tomorrow. We'll see you guys then.